we all we all start the LGS journey in the exact same way when our really young child has their first seizure, right? And then it just uh, the beginning is always awful because you go from seizures to uncontrolled seizures to trying treatment after treatment. There are a number of FDA approved drugs for LGS and there are more than 40 treatments for epilepsy in general and seizures are the main symptom. But the thing about LGS is that the seizures uh, don't become controlled no matter what we try. So most of our families have tried between 10 and 15 different treatments. My own daughter tried and failed 26 before we found something when she was 18 years old that, that was uh, miraculous in dropping her seizures by 99%. And she's an exception. That just doesn't happen. You know, um, there was a treatment that was approved for LGS a few years ago, and um, the number of patients who were seizure-free at two-year follow-up was 6%. And then when you looked at three-year follow-up, that was down to 4%. So uh, we're not staying seizure-free. The seizures are finding a way. And so we're managed mostly by you know, neurology. And then I, I will say that the treatments have increased lifespan. I mean, I don't have the hard, I'm a scientist, so I don't have the hard data to back that up. But I do think our kids are living longer. I remember when I first met a, um, a, a person who with LGS who was in their 40s and I was just like, oh my gosh, they can live to be 40? This is fantastic. And we have people in our group that are in their 50s and 60s, not many. Um, and there does seem to be a drop off, but um, after about the age of 30, you know, but, uh, but, you know, the fact that they can live, but you know, my daughter is 28. She's the mental age of a two to seven year old, depending on the skill you're talking about. Um, and so even though, you know, her seizures are uh, not our biggest problem, we're dealing with the intellectual disability and the aftermath of all those years of brain damaging seizures.